Good morning and welcome to the show. I have a very special guest here today, one of the most fascinating people you'll ever meet, Dr. Glenda Walters from the Historical Society of Bay County. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. You know, I am, I'm just kind of a history buff. That's one of my favorite things to do. That's wonderful. And you know, if, and if you could do something really cool in history and make a living at it, great. <laughs> but um, well, I've enjoyed a career in uh, teaching history, and uh, in my retirement now, I am trying still to promote it for the general public. Because, because for me, uh, uh, learning about history is really about learning about the future. You know, because every situation you could possibly think of has already happened, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so we can learn a lot from history. We can. And in particular, the uh, Historical Society of Bay County tells us about the history here, the rich history of, of this is, area, doesn't it? That's right. We uh, uh, promote programs, uh, monthly programs, uh, throughout most of the year. Uh, we take July and August off, but we promote also the Pioneer Picnic. We promote... Um, uh, writers who are interested mm -hmm. in doing research and so forth. We provide uh, a resource for um, our school children and uh, just try to work within the community at all times to preserve what we have here and uh, to spread the word of uh, You know, we've got a rich history here. And I see you've got a book with you here, uh, and this is your book, uh, uh, Images of America and Panama City. And there are some just beautiful pictures in this thing. Really thank historical. you, thank you. And uh, I can't wait to read it. Hint, hint, I want a copy. And, uh, <laughs> and um, uh, um, who were the, what, what should everybody know about Bacon? Who were the first people here? Well, I think that we had some rather adventuresome people uh, who were uh, considered our first settlers. And the part I like to think of them is uh, how much in awe of the beauty of this area they were and the potential of this area when they first came in to, uh, to explore. Of course, these uh, individuals uh, were not the first explorers. We could go well back and uh, look at some of our Spanish explorers passing through the Northwest Florida area. But uh, I like to think of the settlers and the founders of Panama City as, as people who saw the beauty of the place and the potential and wanted to develop it. The people who actually stayed. That's right. And set up Made shop their homes. And didn't just pass through. Right. You know, and I've talked to some people. There's a very fascinating guy here in town, and, and uh, he, he probably won't mind me mentioning him. Uh, but um, his family got here with Andrew Jackson's uh, uh, expedition, and they stayed. That's right. And, and, and I just find that kind of stuff just so, so fascinating to me. It is. And of course, there were the original peoples who lived here, or, or what we colloquially call the Indians, and it wasn't one tribe. One tribe would come in, another would leave. They, they were having their little land wars as well, weren't they? Well before settlers got here. There, there were uh, a number of tribes in this mm -hmm. area, and we have evidence of their, uh, their coming through too. We, yeah, that, that's pottery awesome and you know, uh, archaeology and studying mm -hmm. that group is a, another facet of uh, our local history that you could bring into the picture. We have to run off to the local weather, but I want to talk more okay. about the good work of the historical society good. and what you guys are trying to achieve here good. in Bay County because uh, history is important to me and I'm really crazy about history. And we'll be right back after your local weather brought to you by the West Pittman Law Firm, westpittmanlawfirm.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Dr. Glenda Walters from the Historical Society of Bay County, and they're doing some exciting stuff in the way of history here, and preserving history. We certainly are. Uh, we are seeing a dream come true, really. Uh, we have long sought a location for a history museum for our local history. Uh, we have a lot of exciting and interesting communities uh, around, the, uh, around our county, and we are, uh, have sought a spot to put their uh, their history, and we've located a building uh, on Oops. West Sixth Street, uh, two twenty three West Sixth Street, and we are in the process of moving in and trying to get it air conditioned. Oh man, you need air conditioning. Yes, we this do. This is Panama City. After yes. All. Now, what is this facility going to be called? Uh, we are working hard to develop a name and would really be willing to take suggestions on mm -hmm. something that will be an all-inclusive yeah, sort I, of a thing. We don't mm -hmm. want to be just uh, 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 one area's museum. 
uh, we have. But it'll be a historical yes, museum. Yes, it will of Bay County. Right. And uh, and it'll include all of the towns and areas that, that are within Bay that County. That make up. And we are certainly not opposed to uh, featuring other people's history too of our Northwest Florida, of the state of Florida. We uh -huh. uh, look forward to, with a facility, being able to bring in uh, exhibitions, to bring in speakers, and uh, to really... And, and just to see all the artifacts of Bay County. Yes. Because you see things like you'll have Museum of Man and the Sea and, and, and you right. know, smaller things like that. It would be so great to have one main place to see everything. That's or at least learn about everything. All the way from the pottery of, uh, of uh, long past mm -hmm. uh, right up unto uh, the paintings of uh, locations that are mm -hmm. still around. Now how can we help? How can people help? We are running with this a um, an online fundraiser through a, mm -hmm. a uh, through a site called Fundly, and you can go to our web page, which is bayhistory.org, all lowercase, all one word, bayhistory.org, and link to uh, Facebook. You can link to our Fundly page, and uh, you can get our local address. And, and you can donate from and there, too. And you can donate right from there. And help this museum there. become a reality. That's right. We've set a goal of $10,000, mm -hmm. and uh, we are working towards that uh, uh, for the next uh, couple of months. We've so you, you got to have air conditioning. you got to get it. all this thing furnished and up and running. Right. And, and what's your target date to open the doors on this? Uh, I would suspect that we should be able to have, I guess as merchants call it, sort of a soft opening mm -hmm. uh, by October, November. I would love to be there. I would love to see that. Well, that's that's great. So, we'll <laughs> certainly be inviting Panama City. <laughs> well, I'll but, be there. Uh, we, we've, we've got goals uh, okay, now you've got for some, an opening. You've got some stuff here. This is a, a, a beautiful, uh, I guess, an ornament you can hang on yes. the tree. That is for sale that's if you right. want to... Uh, uh, help with the museum or raise funds for the historical site right. of Bay County. These have been and you've our got this one too from Lynn Haven uh, Centennial, which is the beautiful Union soldier. Sorry, folks, but that's what he is uh, there on his pendant or uh, ornament. Glenda, we're so out of time. It's not funny, <laughs> but I, I love what you're doing. And if Great. there's anything we can do to help you with this effort to create this museum, just come on back. Wonderful. Well, I'd, I'd love to come back and give you a little progress report all along. All right, Dr. Glenda Walters, thank, thank you, you so much for coming on the show. And we'll be right back after your Mad Hatter Minute. Hi, I'm David Lovett, and this is your Mad Hatter Minute. Uh, today we're going to talk about fuel economy, gas mileage, how to get better gas mileage. And it's real simple and a real simple thing that, that you can do at home. There's actually two main factors that, that, that go into your, to your gas mileage. One is a clean air filter, and two is proper tire pressure. Your air filter is just the first filter on your vehicle. Uh, it takes air, fuel, and fire to make your vehicle go. Air comes in through the intake. There's a, there's a filter uh, to stop any type of dirt and debris and trash and bugs from getting inside, inside your motor. That filter gets clogged. It gets dirty, and it can't breathe. And when the engine's struggling to breathe, it has to increase the gas ratio, which, can, which throws your, gas to, to, to your air to gas ratios off, and your vehicle doesn't want to run right, and you start losing gas pressure. Check your, check your air filter every time you have your oil change. Have your oil changed every 3,000 miles, and just, have, just pop the hood and have your, your service technician check that air filter. If it's dirty, change it. The second, the, the, the second thing that affects gas mileage most is your tire pressure. Look at your tire pressure. You can get a tire gauge or you can stop at any service, service station and they can, they can uh, test your tire pressure. Typically, tire pressure on a passenger vehicle runs around, roughly right around 35 pounds. If you really want to know the exact, exact pressure, look at your tires. On the tire itself, it'll say 35, max 35 PSI. That's the maximum amount of pressure you want to have in your tires. And if you also want to know, you can look on your car, on the, on the pillar, on the inside of the front door. It'll also give, give, give the tire pressure. That's the pressure you need to be running at. Running too low makes the tire flat and it creates drag. So it takes more to start your vehicle running. And the, the harder it is to run, the, the more gas that you're going to burn. This has been David Lovett and this has been your Mad Hatter Minute. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Chris Godber from Elliott Vocal Studios. Uh, and Chris is an instructor out there, and he's going to help us unveil some of the mysteries of the saxophone today. 
Yes, this is, uh, this is like, one of my alto saxophones. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like a very complicated instrument. For someone who's not a musician, you see all these little rods and finger things. And well, it, yeah. it, it is. Mm -hmm. Unlike a trumpet that has uh, maybe three valves, this, this has, a, has a lot of buttons and keys, and everything uh -huh. has to work together. One button just doesn't just push down one key. It pushes stuff down up here, too. So yeah. it, is, it is a complicated instrument. <laughs> it is, and I would imagine it's a complicated thing to play. It is. Uh, it definitely takes a lot of practice, um, and it's, it's one of those things. You, you get what you put into it. Uh, I have asthma, so that's part of the reason um, I played it. Uh, it's because people told me I couldn't, so I want to prove them wrong. Oh, really? And, uh, but mm -hmm. I, 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 I was a product of the 80s. I grew up listening to this guy named Kenny G. Oh, yeah, and, uh, sure. And so uh, I said, I want to play the saxophone like that. And uh, I, I love the saxophone. I love music. was a military brat. Mm -hmm. Grew up uh, in Germany for a little while and listened to a lot of music because we only had one channel on the TV over there. And, uh, and so the saxophone always drew me in. And when I got to middle school, I said, I want to play that. And uh, my doctor said, mm, you have asthma, that's not a good idea, play the piano or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just, I just really pushed forward to it, uh, to playing it and doing it anyway. And the, the positive pressure and resistance it takes to play one of these really strengthened up my lungs uh, to the point that I, though I still have asthma, it doesn't bother me like it used to. So, so it's, it's therapeutic it's, too. Yeah, isn't that yeah. something? So yeah. you can make music with it and it's therapeutic and it's a fun thing to do. Exactly. It is, you know, because it just looks so uh, uh, complicated, it may be intimidating to a lot of people. But it's such a beautiful sound. Do you find people have a lot of interest in the instrument? I do. Uh, I, I, one, I think it's I think it's a really good looking instrument. You know, yeah, it's just, it's just it's something about it. Um, and this the, one has a real seasoned look yeah, to it. Yeah, this one yeah. is totally unlacquered. It definitely has that vintage feel to it. And I, I just mm -hmm. I think it frees up the sound a little bit. I really like that. Um, the, the, the sound of the saxophone, I think, is very intimate, uh, depending on who's playing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it seems to draw people in because I've been told that is the closest instrument to the human voice as far as the the range and the articulation of it um, and, and it, trumpet could be compared to that too but just the range of the saxophone if you want to go beyond the dynamic range of uh, say a high F sharp which is what it's keyed to you have to lip it just like you would a trumpet you have to use your mouth muscles and your embouchure to go to those higher notes and just like you can extend a vocal range it's a muscle you can extend your range to a certain extent with practice mm -hmm. you can do the same thing with the saxophone and just the overall tone of it uh, sounds like a voice. So you teach this at it, uh, LA Vocal Studios at yes, on yes, 23rd I'm, Street. I'm giving some uh, intermediate saxophone lessons those people that already play or have some basic knowledge of the saxophone. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they've had a year or two of band, or they used to play and they're starting to get back up to it. They've picked up their instrument again or are interested in doing so that. So somebody who's a little familiar with the instrument is probably a good student for you. Sure, sure. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, the basics, I really encourage getting in band to learn that because you take, you know, you go to your band class every day and you get that that instruction that is hard to duplicate in, in a 30 or 45 minute lesson. But, uh, but if you already have the basics down, I can really improve on those things and teach you things you won't learn uh, in school, such as playing by ear mm -hmm. and ad libbing and improvisation, and uh, just some advanced techniques of, of just smooth jazz and, and, and whatnot. You know, uh, we've only got a minute left, but uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you mind playing a little bit? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Like, what does this thing you call a saxophone <laughs> sound like? <laughs> So you just picked this up like last week, right? Totally, no. totally, yeah. <laughs> no, that was great. <laughs> thank that you. Is, that, that's like Kenny G good. <laughs> that really is. That's awesome. Well, well, thank you. I've been playing for 17 years, and uh, I, I play every, every day as much as I can. I, I love it, and don't get tired of it. So. Now, now, if somebody is impressed by this and they really want to learn how to play this, how can we get in touch with you? Well, um, you can for lessons, you can definitely uh, contact me through Elliot Vocal Studios. Uh, I believe it's ElliotVocalStudios.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can contact them uh, and uh, book a lesson uh, with me. I'm available right now on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. And uh, if you're interested in booking me for, for music, you can contact them as well. I'm on their uh, artist roster list, or you can contact me through chrisgodber.com. chrisgodber.com, and I can get you to come play at my house at a party? I'd be glad to. Woohoo! Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Holly and Terry Grammer. And they're from Kitchen Tune-Up. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Don. Good it's great you. to be here. You know, I, I, off camera, you know, I told you about my little story when I when I had a uh, 
a property in New York, and you know, and the, you know, the kitchen needed a tune-up, but there was no such thing as kitchen tune-up back in those days. So, I did it myself. You were the tuner. I was the tuner. <laughs> yeah, and boy, believe me, it was a rental property, so it really needed some some tuning up, and and it came out looking okay. It's amazing the transformation a kitchen can go through right. with just some basic things. Absolutely. Stuff like new hardware like we were talking about, new countertops, new doors. We have a process that we can even fix your old worn out cabinets. It, you know, they're only realistically new once, but we can make them look 90% of new without replacing anything. Yeah. So that's very affordable also. There's a lot of services that we offer that can help your kitchen look its best and kind of give folks that kitchen they've dreamed of. Yeah, and, and you know, anybody who's like priced a kitchen, like right. to buy new cabinets, astronomical numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're comfortable in your home and you like where you live and you know, and you don't want to turn your house into a big construction site. I mean, a kitchen tune-up may be the way to go, huh? Absolutely. Certainly. The National Kitchen and Bath Association estimates that home remodeling for a kitchen usually runs about $30,000. Well, I'm here to tell you, we can do it for a, a lot less. And we can work within your budget and give you what you want. I mean, everybody wants something different. Mm -hmm. Some people want new countertops, some people want new cabinets, some people just want to update what they have, and we offer all those services. And it adds so much to the, va the value of yes, your home. Yes, it does. Because when people mm -hmm. are start looking for homes, it's always kitchens and bathrooms. Right. Mm -hmm. You hear that all the yes. time. So uh, the kitchen is, a, you know, you spend your life in the kitchen. And really. those are the rooms that get the most use, yes, too. They do. <laughs> the kitchen is the heart of your home. It really is, particularly the way they're building homes now. Mm -hmm. you know, these, open floor plans and things like that. Right. So what are some of the things that you would do? Like say, I have my kitchen, I look at it, would you come to my house and give me an estimate or maybe give me some ideas right. on what I can do? Maybe I don't know what I want, but I, just, I know I just don't want my old kitchen anymore. Well, we come to your house and we have, we have samples of doors, we have brochures, we have before and after pictures of some jobs that we've done and we just kind of feel like we find out what your needs are in the kitchen, what's gonna work best. Yeah, yeah, and you would show us maybe uh, some samples of things that you can provide to make the kitchen look better. And, yes. uh, and then we could kind of sit down, figure out the cost, and mm -hmm. we're off to the races. How long does it take you to do a, a kitchen? Well, if we do a, a tune-up, which is actually a cabinet restoration where you have stained cabinets and we, we do color matching of your stains, we put new finish on there, we can usually do that in a couple of days. We do also do refacings and redoorings. Right. We, we so it's actually, not going to be forever. Right. You, right. Know, you guys will be in and out of there and nobody will get hurt. We, hope. <laughs> we have to run off to a break, but maybe on the other side of these messages, you can show me some of the things that you might put in my old kitchen to make it look new. Great. Certainly. Okay. And we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Holly Grammer from Kitchen Tune Up, and she's got some cool stuff here to show us on how to kind of spice up our kitchen a little bit. Thanks, Don. Now, I've got a, a, say I've got this awful kitchen I'm sick of looking at. And I see now these are, are new doors that they you would are. put on old cabinets? We would. We would put a veneer over the cabinet face frames, put new doors like this, mm -hmm. add a beautiful piece of hardware, yeah, and uh, you got a kitchen that all of a sudden looks great. Yeah, isn't that amazing? And there's so many choices for hardware. I mean, something as easy or as simple as putting new hardware on a door, you know, really makes it look so much newer. It does. Yeah. And now, you also do countertops, and I see you've got some, some granite samples here as well. We do. And uh, you have a wide selection of granite. We do granite. We do quartz. We have, uh, how many times have you seen this? Wow. <laughs> Oh man, that's that an eye out. catcher. Yeah. We do that have a wide selection. Even that if you is, want huh? red, we have. If you it. wanted red granite, uh, <laughs> for what reason I don't know, but <laughs> you've got it. So you have a, a huge selection here. So you could sit down with a homeowner and say, "Hey, which granite do you like? You know, what will go with uh, what doors? What color do you want that cabinet mm -hmm. to be?" And before you know it, you guys are in. You get out. Nobody yeah. gets hurt. You got a new kitchen for a fraction of the price. Absolutely, of what it would do. it's very reasonable. Who's your typical customer? Our typical customer is a lady who's maybe in her 50s or 60s. She's been in her home for several years and she just wants more function, more storage, and a better design in her kitchen. Mm -hmm. So you can actually redesign the kitchen and maybe move some cabinets around. Oh yes, yeah. move them, take them out. Extend countertops perhaps? Yes. 
So you do all that stuff. Put in islands. Mm -hmm. We do. Now, how do people find out about you, and how can we learn about your work? Well, they can call us at 850-277-0135, or they can go to our website, kitchentuneup.com. Kitchentuneup.com. Well, i got to tell you, uh, you know, for uh, someone who doesn't want to go for the expense of a brand new kitchen, you can have a brand new kitchen uh, just by calling you guys or visiting the website. That's right, and we do free consultations too. Holly Grammer, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.